Okay, welcome to video 33 in the Marine Invertebrate Biology series and the very last for this course. Woohoo! Okay, uh, we are going to be talking about three different phyla, but they all share a feeding structure called the lophophore. They're so we group them into the lophophore phyla. Um, these are all commonly seen in the area that we live in, in New Zealand. Uh, phylum bryozoa are lace corals. Phylum brachiopoda, lantern shells, and phylum foranita, worms. They all look very different, but they all have the feeding structure, the lophophore. And at this point, uh, go to your lesson plan, stop the video, and watch the lophophores in action. It will give you uh, just a little something about what your uh, what your what to look out for as we go through the common features of these different organisms. We'll start with the lace corals, bryozoa. Okay. Um, they're not corals, they're not cnidaria, uh, they're not sponges. Uh, they are, you can see how this has kind of a lacy look to it. They're made up, they're colonies of very small zoids. Uh, this is a very common one that you'll see on a clonia in um, New Zealand. If we're diving in a near shore colonia forest. Uh, and these are little, what look like uh, little moldy spots or something on the, the fronds, but actually they are a an epiphyte, sorry, an epizoid. Here is something that you might think uh, was a hydrozoan, but in fact is a colony of a lace coral, a bryozoan. And another one. Okay, uh, this one could be mistaken for um, maybe an algae, but uh, especially like a, gr a light green algae, but it is a lace coral. And we will be able, you'll be able to recognize the features that distinguish this as we finish this lecture. Here's another one from to uh, another stick bryozoan. You can see the little feeding structures, which are this fuzz around the outside, which gives you the um, diagnostic that it is a bryozoan or rather than uh, something else like an algae or a sponge. So what is a lophophore? A lophophore, which you've seen in the video, is a crown of hollow ciliated tentacles. So much like a, an anemone or, um, yeah, well, let, much like an anemone, it'll have a crown of tentacles um, or a fan worm, but uh, not like the anemone, which has cnidarian, or sorry, cnidocytes. It has ciliated tentacles. These things are filter feeders, and the tentacles capture small organisms and debris, uh, anything organic that's floating around in the water column, and then bring the, them down to the mouth cavity. Okay. They're very common in nearshore waters, okay, and in the diving depths. Got lots of different um, class, lots of different body forms. Three classes. I'm not gonna uh, require you to know those. Uh, they're often eaten by nudibranchs, grazed on by nudibranchs. All right, so what uh, what is a lace coral? So they're generally colonies. They're sessile, which means that they're stuck to the bottom, right? And they're made up of lots and lots of little individual zoids, little in individual organisms that share that overall colony structure. Now, unlike the, um, the uh, cnidaria and the hydrozoans, which tend to have a little bit bigger um, bodies, the bodies of these things are very small, half a millimeter in length. So very tiny with these little filter feeding things. Um, and you can see the structures that they can, might be in the shape of a box or an oval or a tube. And they've got a uh, trunk, which is kind of the body. And then this area that the tentacle can, um, can uh, re retreat into. And then that's the introvert, so that's what um, they can 
retreat into for to stop being eaten or predated on, grazed, and then the loaf of ore itself, which comes out into the water column. Here's a nice uh, image uh, of what a loaf of ore looks like. So you've got the introvert and the, um, the body on the inside, these little muscles here, which can retract and allow the loaf of ore to go out. And then here is the loaf of ore. And it's got this little um, shape like this, where uh, which is distinctive from the pattern of a annelid filter feeder. Okay, we've seen the term operculum before. All right, so operculum is like a trap door. We've seen that in uh, barnacles and in gastropods. And this is one of those colonies on an aclonia um, frond. And you can see all, when you look at these very closely, you'll actually see these little brick-like lattices if you're diving and you look closely at one of these colonies. Um, and each one of these tiny little lattices has the body of uh, an individual zoid. Uh, just another picture of what the loaf of four looks like. You're not really required to, uh, but this is on more of a branching rather than a pillbox shape. Uh, this is a branching type of uh, colony, but you won't be required to know all of those uh, terms. Uh, here's a, a close up, a um, uh, macro shot of with the of loaf of fours out feeding. Very, very small. Another nice uh, macro shot of loaf of fours. All right, so what are they uh, housed in? They're housed in an exoskeleton, which uh, can be calcium carbonate, like, um, like a seashell, or it can be chitin, like a um, mollusk shell. Uh, the calcium carbonate ones obviously sort of build up and uh, leave debris. They're not reef building, but you can find the um, discards, the shells that are of when they've broken off or the, of if they've encrusted some substrate. Sometimes you find them and wonder what they are, uh, they're, but they're calcium carbonate like a rock. The colonies can take on lots of different types of shapes. They could be encrusting. I could just grow over the surface of anything that is uh, that they settle on. It can be sheet-like, foliaceous, branching. Uh, all right, so hopefully you've uh, come across some of these terms uh, in botany when you're looking at the forms of algae. And then stoloniferous, which uh, it looks very much like the hydrozoan colonies that we studied earlier in the course. And most of them are pretty small, but they can get pretty big, up to a meter in height. So feeding, so they have these ciliated um, tentacles, which you've seen, these little crowns, and then they have uh, cilia that beat and create a water column that draws phytoplankton into the loaf of four and th um, gets filtered out by the, by the tentacles. And it Hopefully you've gone to the videos to um, see the loaf of four actually doing that feeding. And then the food is passed into the mouth and uh, as a bolus. And then the in, one of the interesting things, even though these things are extremely tiny, less than half a millimeter, they have uh, a lot more uh, complexity than some of the earlier things that we saw that were quite, uh, quite a bit bigger, like sponges or... Um, or uh, jellyfish. These things have organs and they actually have teeth inside their gizzard. All right, they are um, mostly broadcasters, mostly hermaphrodites, um, and but they will broadcast spawn or brood. And there's an amazing video that shows uh, some brooding and releasing larva and then the transition from uh, the larva right up into a new colony uh, that is linked on the lesson plan or on Moodle. Okay, so brachiopods, we'll move to the next phylum, brachiopoda. 
these are lamp shelves all right so these they were a lot more common uh, in past eras but now uh, we have about 330 species so they look a lot like a bivalve and you could sort of you could be forgiven for thinking they're a bivalve when you look at them but they're a little bit different so you can always tell a lamp shell because it's got this little margin like this this little dip in its shell right at the corner and these things are actually bilaterally symmetrical this way whereas a mollusk uh, like this um, like this oyster right here is actually bilaterally symmetrical the opposite plane so these are bilaterally symmetrical this way they look like they've got two shells but you can see the loaf of four feeding structure in here or they do have two shells they look like a, a bivalve but you can see the two loaf of four feeding structures here there's another picture of it here um, and these are called lamp shells and the other interesting thing about them is be, they have this plane of symmetry here but they also have unlike a bivalve this little tail that sticks in and anchors them into the substrate the red lamp shells are very common in uh, rocky reefs in the near shore waters and diving depths in uh, the Bay of Plenty. And here's a picture of a lamp shell with that characteristic little lip kind of thing right here. And you can see Lophophora number one actually comes up around like so. And then Lophophora number two over here. So they have Lophophores rather than the lamellibranch gills of uh, bivalves but very similar in appearance because they have very similar function and lifestyle uh, as we talked about the plane of symmetry runs through the valves and not between them okay the pedicle is what that little tail is called that goes um, that goes into the substrate in order to anchor it and we finally move on to the last phylum, phylum Foronida, in which case you could be uh, forgiven for thinking that this was an annelid uh, Christmas tree worm or a filter feeder, a filter feeding annelid. But unlike the annelids, they are non segmented. Okay? And these are actually a pair of lophophore. Okay. There you go. This, this is a foreign type a type of worm you'll see commonly in uh, near shore New Zealand um, especially if you're turning over sediment in the um, uh, in the intertidal area uh, and these little loaf of four stick out but you can see that there are no segments so it's not an annelid worm this is another uh, loaf of four that is uh, like the orange variety that is uh, very common in Taranga Harbor and other harbors. Okay, so only about 20 species known worldwide. Um, and like we said, they don't have the setae or segmentation of polychaetes. Okay, and the loaf of four sticks out from the, the tube that where they live in. Uh, muddy sandy rocky substrates and like it like we said before they're easy to um, confuse with the with the feta duster and other fan worms